Let's talk about the different types of vascular dementia because there's not one, and it's related to how one comes to this disease. So under the umbrella of vascular cognitive impairment and uh, vascular dementia, you have mild neurocognitive disorders, which is vascular cognitive impairment, and then you have proper vascular dementia. And there are basically four different um, uh, conditions or subtypes uh, that are related to this. You have um, post-stroke dementia, which means the kind of memory loss that people tend to have after they have a stroke. Or cognition in general, for that matter. Correct, yeah. correct. And this is usually related to damage to the arteries, uh, either in you know multiple parts of the brain, depending on where the stroke happened, or sometimes you actually have a very strategic stroke in one part of the brain. Like, so like example, the thalamus. Correct. So if you have a small stroke in the thalamus, and that's the powerhouse of the brain, suddenly people develop uh, memory problems without having any other vascular lesions in the brain. It could present itself as only memory and cognitive problems, or it could be associated with other signs and symptoms as well related to what part of the brain is damaged. So for example, somebody can start having, you know, a paralysis in part of their body, mm -hmm. weakness of a limb, sensory loss, loss of speech, uh, you know, uh, trouble swallowing, or any damage to our understanding of language, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what side of the brain is involved. And then the second type is subcortical vascular ischemia. And that is something that is not very well defined and it happens to quite a lot of people with poorly vascular, uh, poorly controlled vascular risk factors. And, and very much underdiagnosed. Um, and they just say person has white matter disease, they have uh, vascular disease, and that's it. That's, that's the only report you see usually is in the radiology uh, room and not beyond that. Yeah. And so, um, so basically subcortical means like it's below the, the cortex. cortex. Uh, so these are lesions that are in the deep white matter areas of the brain. And it usually involves very, very small blood vessels. And these are these can be as small as less than 0.1 millimeters in diameter. Um, and depending on the type of pathology that you see, it can cause um, you know, cognitive impairment. And then the third one is multi-infarct um, dementia. Multi-infarct dementia refers to the type of dementia that is caused by a series of small strokes. And this could include TIAs, which are, you know, small little, um, you know, focal deficits uh, that usually go away and accumulation of blood vessel damage over time. So it can be, um, you know, small little uh, strokes that occur over a stretch of a period of time. Yeah, yeah. Lacunes as well. Right. Little, little holes that happen. Right. Yeah. And then we have mixed dementia. And, <clears throat> and you're very passionate yeah. about the mixed dementia. And you see it quite often in your clinic. And I do. I, I do too. And, and I diagnose a lot of people with mixed dementia, although by by standard definition, it would they wouldn't call it mixed dementia, but I think it is. And, and I think that, that that diagnosis will change. When I see vascular disease and degenerative disease together, I call it mixed dementia. And I think that category is much more common than people know and, and much more common than it's diagnosed. And at this point, they only diagnose the mixed component when there's degeneration, which means the brain is shrinking, especially the temporal lobe and, and you know, uh, 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 regions that are associated with a particular type of dementia and a big stroke or a, a, a strategic stroke. But I think that if you have a significant white matter disease, if you have multi multiple uh, infarcts, along with the, the, the degenerative, that should also be a uh, mixed dementia. And that is almost ubiquitous. There is not a single day of clinic that I don't see several mixed dementias. Yeah. Um, yet, and, and it's not uh, reported as often. So let's talk about, we talked about what a vascular uh, the dementia as a result of a stroke would be. It uh, depends on location of stroke. Yes. But the subcortical is also interesting. Right. Um, the subcortical uh, strokes are usually, uh, they usually have some slowness. They call it bradykinesia, which means slowness in walking. Sometimes there's some weakness, one side more than the other. There's often urinary incontinence. Mm. No, uh, uh, very, very often there's urinary incontinence and there's slowness in processing speed, slowness in thinking. Now, of course, there are times that where the back of the brain is affected more than the front so that visual is affected more than thinking and vice versa. But in general, it's slowness, it's gait abnormalities and balance issues. There's sometimes lightheadedness and, um, and definitely some urinary incontinence, which is seen 
and 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 in these cases there are a couple of very um interesting uh, types of subcortical you have the Binz Wagner's and the Cadassel that you want to you might want to yeah uh, so, expand so on. um Cadassel it, it's a uh, it stands for um cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukencephalopathy Somebody thank goodness time to, yeah exactly for they can acronyms. distill this down to smaller yeah yeah so it's the most common form of hereditary stroke um and it is thought to be because of a mutation in the notch 3 gene on chromosome 19. It's not very common, but when people have this particular type of genotype, they start having small strokes very early in life, um, starting in their teenage years and during <clears throat> midlife. And over time, it can result in vascular dementia. Unfortunately, there's no treatment for it. And the most we can do in clinic is to manage vascular risk factors, especially blood pressure yeah. and, and cholesterol. They're, they're also associated with migraines and headaches? Correct, yes, it is associated with migraine and headaches. Um, and um, over time, you know, most people, especially those with uncontrolled vascular risk factors, tend to have a lot of disability with, Correct. This, with this condition. I want to make sure that those people who have headaches and migraines uh, don't get scared. It's the relationship is if they have cadassal, they have migraines and headaches. It's not the other way where if you have migraines, you're going to have strokes and cadassal. So that, that relationship should be clear. And Binswagner is basically significant white matter disease. Correct. Binswagner usually seen with people who have chronic uncontrolled hypertension. Yeah. And obviously, you know, old age or as, as we all get older, our arteries become more and more frail. And so it has, it is usually seen, um, you know, at, at, at the, uh, you know, for in people who are 65 and above and have uncontrolled vascular risk factors. I think we also have to mention amyloid angiopathy here um, because it does fall under the category of subcortical um, dementia. It does. I mean, angiopathy is amyloid deposition. Amyloid is the protein that people talk about in Alzheimer's, but now we know that it's that relationship with Alzheimer's is there, but it's not as strong as people thought. It's just a protein that accumulates more in some people, but definitely in aging in general. And if there's a lot of it, they also tend to bleed. They have these little micro bleeds uh, because of the amyloid accumulation uh, as, as you get older. In fact, that's why People who live long enough, they have more amyloid, they have more hemorrhagic strokes, and you see this disease. Um, and But if you have an amyloid angiopathy, which is a disease specifically with amyloid buildup in the brain and subsequent vascular disease and some subsequent microvascular disease and hemorrhages, which is bleeds, mm -hmm. then they have dementia and cognitive decline and, and quite a bit of the, uh, um, uh, impairment. Absolutely. So these are some of the categories. We didn't want to get too wonky in this, but but I think we already did. So, But it's important because you can see there are so many different ways that it manifests, and it's so common. And and majority of these are not diagnosed. A radiologist calls it vascular disease on the MRI or white matter disease, and it's just recorded somewhere, and people don't do anything about it. Right. And, and there is a lot to be done for much of these uh, conditions, especially when it's at the vascular cognitive impairment stage or early stages.